Hey folks, back with another scale model review. This time it's of a kit that I just finished building. This is a 125 scale 69 Charger Daytona released by AMT under the Johnny Lightning series. And if it looks familiar to some of you, it's because just a few days ago, I did a review on this kit unbuilt on my channel. Now, for those of you that are familiar with this kit, you know it's an absolute disaster. Probably one of the worst 125 scale renderings of a Charger Daytona. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, feel free to check out my channel to learn more about how this kit is pretty challenging, well beyond the skill too that it says in the box. Anyway, I decided I'd take it out and see how it builds. Now I like one and two day builds. I don't go for high detail anymore. I just do it for the fun of it. But as you can see, this isn't a Daytona. It is a Charger, but not a Daytona. And this is why. Now, although the kit comes with everything to make a 69 Charger Daytona, one of the biggest issues with it, besides for horrible fit and finish, is the fact that this nose cone here actually doesn't fit on the car. It comes with these weird filler strips and actually recommends in the instructions that you use modeler's putty to get everything to blend. Well, when I read that, I knew right off the bat, that's not what I'm going to do. But beyond that, this kit had a lot of issues. Beyond flashing and parts that didn't fit right, the wheels were wrong, the tires were very small. Actually, you can kind of see in the picture. The tires are disproportionate, very low profile for the car. And it, it overall had quite a few issues beyond flashing. The body just needed a lot of attention. But luckily, the kit did come with a 69 grill, a stock 69 Charger grill. So when I saw that, I thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to freestyle it and just build it as a regular Charger. For the most part, it's pretty correct, with the exception of the flush rear window that you'd only see on Daytonas. Um, one thing you could do, I will say this, that flush mount w window is something you'd also find on a Charger 500. If you want to do a Charger 500 build, this is actually a pretty good candidate. Again, overall, the kit built up pretty nicely. Um, although the, the detailing in the interior was was pretty washed out, especially like the door panels and stuff. It's a very old, uh, very old tooling from what I'm gathering. Uh, I've did a bit of research on it. It seems everyone that built this kit had issues with it. Uh, they, they never come out clean. I clean the body up as much as I can, but as you can see this, this section of the window, there was a huge mold line. I tried to sand that out, but what you see is basically a gap from, from factory. Um, so it's not perfect. It had charger script right here. I should have sanded it off because it basically gets washed out uh, under a couple coats of paint. But again, overall, not a bad kit. Um, this one's kind of interesting. I'd say if you're building a stock charger, just a 69, or you're building a charger 500, which, by the way, you can get a 500 grill from, I believe it's MPC. Um, I don't know if those kits are still in production, but they do make them. And uh, I believe this is the correct hood for a charger 500. So it is possible to, to build this correctly, but again, the body requires a bit of work because although the lines are proportionate and uh, the body's pretty straight, you know, it, it, it comes out as it should, the mold lines and stuff are are uh, pretty horrible. Um, well, I shouldn't say horrible, but they're, they, they, they're definitely challenging. They need some work. This kit, if you want to build it accurate as a Charger 500, you could do that. Good for someone with uh, mid-level skill. You can build it right out of the box as a 69 Charger with no issues if you, you just clean up the flashing, basically. If you don't mind some of these, you know, little uh, imperfections. But if you want to build it as a 69 Daytona, it's it's not for the novice, not even for the, uh, the mid-level experienced builder. I'd say this is more for the expert. Um, Parts-wise, pretty detailed, like I said. Uh, has these great seats. I don't know if you can see it. it. has lap belts and stuff. This kit could be built one of three ways. Um, stock, uh, mild custom, 
or uh, I think there was like a competition, a full out competition version. Uh, some of that has to do with the hood. There was a hood scoop. You can cut uh, a hole out of this hood and put a hood scoop. There was different options for the, uh, the engine. You could do uh, uh, kind of a Hillborn style intake or a, uh, a supercharger. Um, you know, so you could have basically the stacks on the intake instead of the uh, stock air cleaner. Or like I said, a supercharger that stick way out of the hood. Now, my biggest issue with this, um, beyond the, the flashing and the fitment issues, um, was the wheels. Now, those are the stock wheels, kind of a Magnum 500 style. And right out of the box, uh, the wheels themselves were almost too big for the tires. And they didn't show very well, kind of poor quality. But the tires themselves were really small. Like, you can also kind of tell by the box box art um they were like low profile and the proportions didn't work so what i did was i grabbed these steelies or what would be steelies and added these dog dish wheel covers from a 1964 dodge 330 and that kit's from uh, Lindbergh. Uh, i believe that kit is still in production uh under a few names, I think round two uh, might still make it. But um, those uh, wheels and tires are actually from the Lindbergh kit. And they're substantially larger, at least the tires are, than the stock tires that came with this. But as you can see, they really set it off. And the proportions are perfect. Now, going back to the issues I had with this kit right out of the box. As you can see, oh, the hood fitment's not that great. I didn't work at it too much because, again, I like one- and two-day builds. Excuse my camera focus. Um, this took me start to finish a day and a half. Uh, that's including paint, so I didn't want to go much beyond that. But the uh, the hood, again, fitment wasn't so great. It's not a hinged hood. It just sits down like that. This kit has one engine, but there's different uh, intake options. That's 426 Hemi. Um, if you use one of the different carburetors, the hood doesn't sit on properly, so keep that in mind. Uh, the the engine bay is pretty simplistic. The radiator, my radiator, uh, and the ha the the two sides of it didn't fit well at all in that little space, so uh, I had to uh, rework it. Beyond that, a big issue I had is that rear bumper did not want to go on the car whatsoever. There's actually normally two uh, little parts of the bumper here, bumperettes, that I had no choice but to shave off because the, the lower part, as you can see, that's red, um, is one piece connected to the body. And it was warped that bad that I couldn't basically straighten it out. So that charger, um, that charger license plate actually hides how crooked that is because... There's a, a split in the middle, and the bumper and license plate are supposed to basically attach and bring everything together. Well, I, sh I shaved the two nubs off the license plate and took those bumper rights off in a, an attempt to get things to kind of lay flat. I also had to shave a whole bunch off the bumper and the body to get that bumper to go in. So that's something to really be mindful of. You know, if you're going to build this, you're going to run into problems with certain parts. Overall, though, um, if you're building it like this, uh, it's not so bad. Um, I give it probably, you know, on the mild to moderate scale, moderate difficulty. Not not uh, not too intense. Uh, someone with with some moderate skill uh, with modeling could could do a good job of this. But again, if you want to build that. You got to know what you're doing, otherwise it's going to look like trash and nothing's going to go together. Um, this is one that had a lot of spare uh, parts left over in the box. I have all the competition parts, and there was some other weird stuff like fire extinguisher and and things that weren't necessarily even identified. Uh, one thing I will say about my kit is it was missing out of the box um, axles for the the front wheels. Basically, there's uh, two little axles and a pin. None of those were on the tree. The back axle on this, uh, it's a metal axle that just pushes into the wheels and goes through the uh, the frame tub. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, I was lucky in that the Lindbergh tires 
fit the uh, the wheel backings of the the uh, AMT charger here. Uh, the only thing I had to do was hollow out the wheels a little, or uh, the the rubber a little bit around the tires, because it was a tight fit. Um, for the front bumper, as you can see, I detailed it out with some black paint. Front bumper doesn't like staying in the uh, in the the body. Basically, there's not much holding it in there. In fact, from the other side, you can kind of see daylight through uh, the back side. You can see daylight through either side of the. Of the uh, between the the grill and the fender basically so that's one that you're going to want to set up some kind of a jig to hold your your bumper and grill in and just put a big gob of maybe super glue or something like that or modeler's putty if, if you're a little more advanced to kind of hold it in until things set up but anyway overall i was pretty happy with it um with the stance of it beyond the wheels um there's two holes in the in the uh, frame where you can put your axles through. There's a lower one, I think, if you want to do kind of a, a lowered suspension vibe in the front or back, like a low rider, or uh, this this setup. This is higher, but basically, as you can see, it, it sits like a stock 69 Charger would. For the color, uh, I went with uh, a Chrysler color. This is pretty similar to 69... Uh, Cordovan red, uh, but this is actually called a red rock crystal. Uh, this is a later color, very similar. It's something I just had on a shelf, but this is a, a Jeep color that you'll see in the uh, newer Jeeps in the 2010s, but very, very similar to period correct, um, kind of a, a red bronze. And the interior, I went with uh, kind of a contrasting uh, gold, gold mist. Looks good. I think it really sets it off. And these body colored steel wheels with the dog dish hubcaps, I think, kind of complete the package. And although those are, like I said, off of a, a 69 Lindbergh kit, they're very much period correct for a, a 68 970 Charger. Um, these did come with body color steel wheels with, uh, with the dog dish wheel covers. Now, as far as detailing this out, I started to do it. I haven't quite finished it. I started to do some some silver chrome around the uh, the windshield bezel. I will do the door handles, but other things like the marker lights and the charger script are impossible to do. They, there's just not enough um, relief in the body. Uh, the molds aren't sharp enough to uh, to get all the detail. Overall built like this. I actually kind of like this kit and believe it or not, I would build this kit again. Um, I have no intention of ever trying the, the Daytona version looking at it. There's just too much work and it's not a very detailed kit. There's, you know, a lot of body issues. As, as I mentioned, the, the, uh, the hood doesn't line up very well. There's no hinge system on the hood either. Uh, none available through the, through the kit anyway. Um, so for those reasons, I wouldn't invest that much time building it as a charger and doing all the body work. There's many other better versions of a of a 69 Daytona. Um, that's what I should say. I, I wouldn't build it as a 69 Daytona. But as a charger, maybe get a, a 500 grill or just a freestyle like I did. Great kit. It's actually worth the buy. And if you can get it cheap enough, you know, this kit, this Johnny Lightning series came out sometime in the mid-2000s, 2010 maybe. Um, it's worth it. If you got it cheap enough, I'd build it and have some fun. As always, thanks for watching my videos. And uh, if I get a chance to put another model on the bench, you'll be the first to see it. Thanks, folks.